All right, we've uh, we've gone through a number of distributions, uh, discrete distributions, and now our next um, what we what we're going to do next is we're actually going to go through uh, a few more um, properties uh, that we can say about expectations in general, and uh, that'll show us a few more new techniques and as well uh, allow us to introduce some new concepts uh, that we haven't seen seen before. So let's start um, with some additional rules for expectation. Okay, so What can we say about expectation in general for all random variables kind of across the board? So that's a uh, that's a question for us. Um, more rules for expectation. And to start, we have two. We have two things we can say. So let's suppose first that we have a random variable that's non-negative and discrete. So we have discrete means it takes at most countably many values and non-negative means all of those values are, at, are bigger, than, bigger than or equal to zero. Then we can say two things. <clears throat> expectation of x is bigger than or equal to zero and it equals zero if and only if x is equal to zero with probability one so i think this should be pretty intuitive um the point though is that it's not it's not something that should be taken for granted. It does have to be proven and we will prove it. Um actually will will I prove it? No, actually I won't prove that because it is actually so straightforward that it, it could be proven as an exercise, but there's really no um there's really no way to um Uh, so anyway, that'll be an exercise. So in other words, if, so, if a random variable is always bigger than or equal to zero, of course we expect it to be bigger than or equal to zero. And the only way we could expect it to be equal to zero is if it was always zero because it, it, it's, it's always bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, the next one is sometimes comes in handy actually quite a bit is that if if X is strictly positive, so can't equal zero, then we can actually compute its expectation as the sum over positive integers of the tail probabilities or what are called the survival probabilities, the probability that X is bigger than or equal to K for each K. So sometimes this is convenient um, to have to compute an expectation because sometimes this probability here is just uh, a more manageable expression than the probability mass function. But it is worth noting this only really works uh, or holds in the case when X is strictly bigger than zero. So how do we prove this, okay? And what we're going to prove here uh, is a little bit um, is strictly uh, well is is a technique that's commonly used in probability, um, which is writing the probability writing an expression in a in a specific way and then reversing in the order of of summation. Um, it is important to understand that that's not something that can always be done. There are some technical uh, considerations there. Um, however, um, 
for most of what we do in this course, um, those technicalities don't don't show up. So um, how are we going to do this? So where do we start? So we always start just what do we know about expectation? We actually don't know very much about X here, right? X is just assumed to be a positive random variable we, and discrete. There's nothing else we know about it. There's no further restrictions on it. So the the really the, the place we can start is... I guess it should be assumed discrete um, and integer valued. Okay. So given that, I mean, what's the definition of expectation? It's just the weighted average, prob probability weighted average. And so what, what can we really do with this? So the most, at this point, there's not a whole lot we have. We don't really have a whole lot of information at our disposal. So, but what we can do and the little trick that we're going to introduce is that we can write this number K in a creative or clever way. Okay, what's, a, what's an alter, alternative way to write the number K? Well, let me just put this in a different order. I'm going to put the probability first. And then I want to write K in a, in a, in, as a, in a clever way. What is it? I'm going to write K as the sum from J equals one to infinity of an indicator function on the event that J is less than or equal to K. So what does that mean? That means that I of, uh, let's say, J is less than or equal to K. So a better way to write this would be I sub K of J. So I sub K of J is equal to one for all of the integers that J is less than or equal to K and zero otherwise. So then what you can see then is that if I'm summing even though this is an infinite sum, this here is only equal to one for the for the j's that are less than or equal to k. So I get one plus one plus one plus one up until k, and then I have zeros after that. So I'm adding k ones together, which is just k. And so that's well, that's what that expression is doing. This is equal to k. <laughs> And now by doing that, by writing the sum in that way, I can notice that I'm dealing with all non-negative quantities here. This is, this is where the technicality comes in, is that the probabilities are non-negative and these indicators are either zero or one, they're non-negative. So I can actually reorder the sum. I can, I, can add, I can change the order in which I add these up. I can add with respect to J first, and then with respect to K second. And the limits of the summation don't depend on the arguments. So all this is all, all is well and good here. Probably X equals K indicator function. Okay. Okay. But now what I can do actually is I can write this or I can regard this indicator as a function of K, not as a function of J, right? So another way to write this would be um, to define a function for every J, which is equal to one or zero if K is big or equal to J. So K bigger than or equal to J is the same thing as J bigger than or equal to K. So there's no difference here. Um, but what I, but, but what, what do I gain by doing that? Well, what I gain by doing that, and I'm just going to rewrite it in here, is that I look at this as a sum over K now, not as a function of J. J is fixed. So for each J, this is a fixed uh, fixed subscript. 
And so what I'm doing then here is I'm summing up the probabilities of X, but only the prob, and then I'm multiplying by a number that's either one or zero, right? And that number is one or zero. It's zero when K is less than J and it's one for all the values of K bigger than J. So what does this amount to? Well, this, this amounts to then sum from k equals j to infinity, right? Because all of the k, all of the j, all of the k's that are less than j, this indicator will be equal to zero and it'll zero out the term. And so this is equal to the probability of k. Well, the, the, the term is equal to probability of k. And now this here is the sum of probabilities from j up to infinity. So this all combined is the probability that x is bigger than or equal to j, sum overall values of j. Okay. And we have what we wanted to prove. Okay. Next thing is if we have a random variable, if we have two random variables, and remember random variables are functions from the probability space to the real numbers. If we have a, a, a pair of random variables such that point wise for all outcomes, X is less than or equal to Y. And we would write this just in shorthand as X less than or equal to Y, then <clears throat> expectation of X is less than or equal to expectation of Y. So if we know that Y is always less than, if, if we know that X is always less than Y, there's just no way for X to be bigger than Y, no outcome in which X is bigger than Y, then the expectation of, then we expect X to be less than, less than or equal to Y. That's intuitive. Um, but let's think about how we might prove this. Remember, expectations can be infinite. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, we, we take care of any edge cases. So we would state that this is obvious for the case where either expectation of X is equal to minus infinity because minus infinity is less than or equal to everything or expectation of Y is equal to plus infinity because plus infinity is bigger than everything. So now let's suppose the case where expectation of X is bigger than minus infinity and expectation of Y is less than infinity. So if we're in this case, then we can define a variable called D, which is the difference between Y and X y minus x. And by definition, so what is the definition of this? Remember, so, if, so remember a random variable is a function from sample space to the real numbers. And the way that we're defining d, d here is as y minus x, which means y, y omega minus x omega for each omega. But by definition, by assumption here, x omega is always less than or equal to y omega, which means that this random variable D is always bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so what what did we do up here? We What did we argue in the first case is that if X is always bigger than or equal to zero, then the expectation of X is bigger than or equal to zero. So this tells us then that the expectation of D is equal to the expectation of y minus x, which is equal to the expectation of y minus the expectation of x. We can break this sum out because we're assuming that expectation of y is finite. And expectation of x and expectation of y are finite in the correct way. And by part one, we know that this is bigger than or equal to zero. And then we rearrange and we see that 
expect that means that expectation of y is bigger than or equal to expectation of x. Okay. Okay. Um, conversely, we can also show that if expect if if both expectation of x and expectation of y are finite then if their expectations are equal in the situation the random variables are always equal or equal with probability one. Okay. So those are some basic, um, basic properties of expectation, really just that if we have random variables that dominate each other in some sense. So remember this is important. This is saying that no matter what happens, you know, no matter, no matter which outcome occurs, X is always less than, less than or equal to Y. So an example would be, um, if X, if we're talking about um, two dice, a red die and a black die, and X is the value on the red die and Y is the value on the black die, then X is definitely not always less than or equal to Y. It's possible that, uh, you know, X can be six and Y can be one and X can be one and Y can be six. So there's no relationship there. But if X is the value on the red die and Y is the sum of the two of the values on the red and black die, then we know that Y will always be bigger than or equal to X because Y is equal to X plus some positive number, which is the value on the black die. And so that's a situation in which this relationship would hold. And therefore we know that the expected value of Y, the expected value of the sum of the two dice is bigger than or equal to the expected value on one of them. So that's in some sense an obvious consequence, but it can be useful in some situations as we'll see.